This conference will now be recorded. This is March 25th, 2022, and we are uh, having another uh, Bible talk between my friend Gunter and myself. My name is Guy. And Gunter, would you open us up in a word of prayer? Thank you very much indeed for the privilege, Guy. Please, our dear, loving Heavenly Father, Jehovah, please listen to us as we come before your lofty throne through the office of your dear son Jesus, whom you have appointed not only as king, but also as high priest, so that all those with an honest heart can approach you with freedom of speech, relying very much on your mercy and your undeserved kindness. Thank you so much for the way in which our conversation has taken place over a number of months, together with uh, our dear friend Guy, his dear wife Irene and Boniface. Please may we ask you by means of your son for your Holy Spirit to continue with the way in which you guide us, particularly those that wish to discern your will in harmony with the lead of your dear son, Jesus Christ. Please, in his worthy and precious name, we really thank you for the opportunity to uh, discuss how um, individuals can become friends of yours, and certainly, like Abraham, who had very limited knowledge, and who in due time was called your friend. He trusted in you implicitly, and as Guy mentioned earlier on, we ourselves trust in you implicitly. But there are many gaps, because we are only human, as you well know far better than we do, and we are imperfect. There are many gaps in the puzzle of uh, how to answer certain questions. So we pray, please, as we consider this material, that you may not only guide us now, but especially our dear friend Guy and uh, his wife Irene, as well as one of us, with answers that presently seem to be puzzling. We are appreciative of the fact that when two or more are gathered in the name of your dear son Jesus, then uh, he is also with us. So we give you thanks for that lofty privilege in his precious name. Amen. Amen. So, a review. Um, if we go to, I don't know, I've got it on the electronic uh, version now, so I don't have a page number at the moment, but do you remember the section that was talking, lesson eight, you can become Jehovah's friend? Yeah. So the I'm first, uh, lovely. Oh, lesson eight, okay. Yeah. Okay, so the first uh, question there was based on the scripture in James, James 4.8. Um, what invitation does God offer you? James 4.8. Yeah, so let's see here. I could read it directly off there, but I'll go over to the King James. Sure. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse That's your hearts, it. ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Yeah, so even those that presently have a divided heart or a divided mind, you know, is this true, is this not true, and so on, so on, we encourage to draw close to Jehovah God. Lovely. Amen. So the, sec so the second point, why is Jehovah the best friend you can have? You want me to read 1 Peter 5, 7? Yes, please, by all means, yeah. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Yeah. So like a, uh, the best father anybody could have, the best imaginable father, uh, or the best father we can imagine, that's a better phraseology, um, is, is one that will take 
burdens off us. And you've experienced in your life, you know, you've related that to me, God. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and all of us, when we, with honest hearts, although we don't know our Creator properly, but we can always turn to Him and say, please help. And He does. You know? Amen. Can I read, Amen. if I can call it, if I can call it up? Um, so I'm not I don't know if I can actually call it up. Yes, I can do it. And Psalm 94, 18 and 19, do you want to go there? Sure, one moment. Sure, one moment. All right. Do you want to read that first and then I'll read it yeah, again? Just, yeah, I'm there now. When I said, my foot slippeth, slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts, within my com within thy comfort. Let me try that again. In the multitude of my thoughts, within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Super. So in in this uh, translation, it says, "When I said my foot is slipping, your loyal love, O Jehovah, kept supporting me." When anxieties overwhelmed me, you comfort, you comforted and soothed me. So slightly different expression, but in principle the same meaning. Whether we say mercy or whether we say loyal love, it means that when we turn to our Creator, then He does not ignore us. That's the big thing, isn't it? And Amen. and no matter who turns to Him. Um, regardless of their background. Remember the, the account of Manasseh. Manasseh was a worshipper of Jehovah, who then went completely off the rails, filled Jerusalem with the blood of innocent victims. And when Jehovah called him to account, he repented. So Jehovah extended his life. Um, now that is quite something, but it needed a change of heart on his part. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to three, to three, what does Jehovah expect of his friends? Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Proverbs 3, 20, 32. Yeah, if you want to read it. Working on it. Just a moment. Uh -huh. There's no hurry. For the forward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. Yeah, and close friendship is, you, know, you, you remember when Jesus, uh, first of all, was talking to his disciples as if they were his slaves. And afterwards, he said to them, I no longer call you slaves, but you are my friends. Um, now, this is talking about Jehovah. For Jehovah detests a devious person, but his close friendship is with the upright. So, similar in that case, where Jesus said, now I call you friends. Because a slave does not know what his master is doing, but a friend does. So then he went into more detail. And the, the whole idea is that when we are wanting a friendship with Jehovah, then as we discussed last week, he has the right to expect us, where necessary, to change. So Psalm 147. Sure. Um, and, and if I could just interject on that, um, if um, who does Jehovah and his son want to be friends with? Well, the scripture says with the upright ones. What's that? Well, the scripture okay, says. So, true, true. But, but who friend, does he want? Who, who, yeah. Within the scope of humanity, who, who does. Yeah. Who do they want to be friends with? Principally everybody, yes. That's all. That's Everyone. All. So what's yeah. stopping them? Yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But when it when it comes to you know an, an actual uh, activating a friendship with a male is a term, then a good example is found uh, Jesus and his disciples at the last supper or the last evening meal. Um, Jesus did not make a covenant with the person that turned out traitor, and by then. Jesus knew who the traitor was going to be because he said, you know, you know that as well as I do, the one who, who dips his morsel into the into the banqueting bowl. So he already knew he allowed him to be there, but then he turned around and said, Look, what you have to do, do more quickly. And he dismissed him basically, that is to say, Judas. Now there was no way that Judas that Jesus would make a covenant for a kingdom with a traitor. And the the example of Manasseh also illustrates that. At the time when let, Manasseh... Let me, uh, let me back up just there for a minute. Who yeah. is it that didn't make a covenant in that situation? Was it Jesus or was it Judas? Was it? The covenant was extended. What I would suggest is the covenant was extended but Judas allowed Satan to come into his heart and could not accept it. Well, if you look at the details, you find that before um, Judas was, was told by Jesus, you know, what you have to do, do more quickly. In other words, I know you're going to betray me, so just get on with it. Um, but it was afterwards to his 11 faithful disciples that Jesus made the covenant with so uh, the, the point in case uh, being that he could not make a covenant with a traitor and and the whole idea and yes Judas rejected the the possibility uh, you know he chose chose money over the future with Jesus so you know 30 shillings sorry 30 shillings that's petty cash yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's price of a slave, huh? right? At, at that at that particular time, and yeah, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, it was one of those points, guy, that I had to do quite a lot of uh, digging. I thought to myself, uh, oh, you know, I, I think I explained to you so, sort of virtually seventy years ago. I got to know about the Jesus of the Bible, and I started to love him back then. So uh, to me, he was the ideal role model. Uh, but then uh, the fact that I didn't listen and, and follow through on that, that's not his fault, it's my fault. Fortunately, mercy was extended to me when I was with my dear Maria. And since then, uh, we have learned an awful lot about more about the Son of God. But the, the whole idea of, of the covenant, uh, this particular covenant was uh, what one could call a bilateral covenant, meaning two two parties are involved, whereas other covenants, like the Rainbow Covenant, for instance, or uh, that is a unilateral, where nobody could do anything about it. Jehovah said, "This is my covenant that I'm making towards humanity, namely, I will never destroy the earth by flood again." So, and as a sign of that covenant, I put the rainbow in. So that is what what we understand to be a unilateral covenant. Um, that that means that the not like the law covenant, where the nation of Israel at Sinai said, when they were told, you know, this is a covenant. What do you what do you say? Do you say yes or no? Yes, we want to follow uh, those requirements. And that's a bilateral covenant where two parties are involved. However, I'm going off the subject. Yes, you're quite right. Um, Judas had the chance, but he was, he was the one who loved the money box and he got himself in a right mess. And, and, and I guess that's just something that I really, we, we put more on the Son of God and the Father of God as being the acting party when we need to realize, at least in my opinion, 
far more poignantly that we're the active party saying, you know what? Um, yeah, you got a good offer, but it's just not for me. That's right. And that's yeah. true. That's true. I mean, that's what happened at the time of Noah. It is, it is possible that it took Noah between 40 and 50 years to build the ark. No, no, now, it took him 120. Right, okay, slightly different understanding. But the okay. point was, just the point was that the people there had ample opportunity to listen to Noah. Ample. True, true. And when the heavens opened and the, the floodwaters came down and, you know, the, the earth broke open and, and uh, swamped the earth with water, then they were saying, oh, well, you know, we should have done. Well, sorry, shop closed. Right. And, and so the fault lay with the individual at the time. And the same with Sodom and Gomorrah, exactly. These are the two patterns, according to Peter, that uh, are contained in the scriptures to show that on one hand, humans have the opportunity, but on the other hand, uh, the vast majority rejected. They did reject it in the nation of Israel, in the vast majority, hence the 40 years in the wilderness, and they rejected Jesus when uh, he was <laughs> more, than, more than qualified uh, to show that he was the promised Messiah. The vast majority uh, rejected him. Um, and it, it will be the same in our time. And that's why Jesus in Matthew 7 says about the road to life being narrow. Amen. And Steve. And, yeah, and that's right. And the gate cramped. So it takes yeah. effort. It takes effort. And even with an honest hearted person, it takes effort. And that's right. I, I often, I mean, years ago, I, I saw to start to reason this out and I thought to myself, why, why is it? Well, number one, of course, because we've got imperfect inheritance. Number two, we have uh, the chief adversary, Satan the devil. But also, number three, we have the prospect of everlasting life. And I thought to myself, if I had to hand out the gift of everlasting life, would I be selective? Would, would you know, our, our loving Heavenly Father not be selective and say, okay, you don't want my son. You just want to worship me. Okay, if that's what you want. But I am saying, you do need to accept my son. Mm. And there are, there are religions, you know, with adherence about a billion or something like that, who simply reject Jesus right out of hand and simply say, well, we believe in the God. Well, well, you can get on with it, you know, believe in the God. But unless you include Jesus in your worship, you've had it. And, and you know, time and again, yesterday I went and picked up a kebab. And the, uh, the kebab shop here is run by, uh, by Turks. So their religion is Islam. So I went in, there was one, the, the man who was serving there. So I started chatting to him. And uh, I, I had on my phone, I said, what's your language? And he said, Urdu. I said, okay, let me just show you something. So we have a, a short video, a, a one minute plus video. So I called it up in Urdu. He started playing, to, playing it. And as soon as Bible was mentioned, he said, just a minute, I get my phone. And this is a typical re reaction you know, of, mm -hmm. of, people, of, of people from that part of the belief system. And so he showed me a, uh, a started to show me a video in English of, you know, this Christian woman became uh, a follower of Islam. So I had seen that uh, on YouTube. So I just said, yeah, okay. I said, we respect 
the right of everyone to believe uh, want to believe what they want to and i know exactly what this is talking about so well done for accepting the existence of an almighty god so you know thanks very much for the give up and i will see you some other time but you know the whole religion really by by saying no we can't accept the uh, Jesus Christ as the Son of God, um, they're rejecting Jesus' role and therefore their worship is futile, which some have recognized, but in general because of the, the awful way in which they indoctrinate their people, um, the vast majority, you know, are, are done, to use your term. Let's go back to something sensible. Acts 15, no, Acts 10, 34, 35. Do you want to read that, please, uh, Guy? Which is the way in Acts which Jehovah... Acts 34 and 35. It's in, in the third part of the... What does Jehovah expect of his friends? Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. That's right. So in this rendering, it's at this Peter began to speak and he said, now I truly understand that God is not partial, but in every nation, the man who fears him and does what is right, in a relative way, what might, ex might express, is accept, acceptable to him. So the, the individuals whose heart uh, are inclined towards doing the right thing, although they can stumble, they will uh, be drawn to him as Jehovah's friend. Amen. Okay, so we went to four. Abraham was Jehovah's friend. Genesis 12. Did we see this before? Did we read this last time? I can't quite remember. I feel like we did. Okay. I, I feel All like right. we should be on chapter 9, actually. Right. Okay. I just wanted to re review. So what did Jehovah ask Abraham to do? A very well-known uh, part of the this prophecy. Mm-hmm. What did Jehovah ask Abraham to do? To leave his country and uh, go. That's the one. What did Jehovah promise him? Uh, that he would have a very fruitful uh, offspring. Exactly. And the third point, how did Abraham respond to Jehovah's instructions? There's a point for us to learn. Well, the, the good part is that he, go, that he went. The bad part is he took his human flesh with him. That's right. And as far as our, we are concerned, let's read the scripture in Isaiah 48, 17 and 18. Guy, please, if you can call Isaiah, that up. Isaiah what? Isaiah 48, 17 and 18. Thus saith the Lord, the, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, capital L-O-R-D, which teacheth <laughs> thee to profit. Which, what's that? No, no, I'm chuckling. Okay. Which leadeth no. thee by the way that thou shouldst go. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Yeah. Oh, and Lovely. my favorite punctuation mark. I don't know that right. I've ever told you why that's my favorite punctuation mark. Go on, tell me. So it, it, a lot of people call it a, sem, a, a semicolon. I mm -hmm. don't call it a semicolon. I call it a period with a point. <laughs> the sen the sentence just ended, but the point is still ahead. Yeah, lovely, lovely. 
a period with a point. Yes, I know you mentioned that before. This rending says, this is what Jehovah says, your repurchaser, the Holy One of Israel. I, Jehovah, am your God, the one teaching you to benefit yourself, the one guiding you in the way you should walk. If only you would pay attention to my commandments, then your peace would become just like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Amen. So, by the way, um, I was slightly wrong on what I said. I said that was a semicolon. It's not. It's a colon. The semicolon, I, I, uh, basically, basically cause a paused point. So, but I like my period with a point better. Right. Anyway, <laughs> that sounds. It sounds good. Okay. Go, go so, ahead. right. Okay. Of course. So let's. Um, we looked at the picture where mm -hmm. a young lady is praying, maybe at the time not even knowing who her creator is, as it's happened many times, but then the answer comes from the Bible, doesn't it? And that's the, the, whole, the whole idea. All right. So, um, I can time and again point to the uh, various references which always support uh, the, the main points of the various teaching lessons. So it, if anything, they're designed to strengthen our faith. You know, that's the, that's the whole idea behind those. Let me see that I can get, that I can get to chapter nine. Draw close to God through prayer. We hadn't started okay. on that, had we? Uh, hmm? We got a little bit into it, not a whole lot. Right, okay. I know we dealt with the first part. Right. Let's let's look at John 5, 14. Um, and what's, we're, we're, I'm trying to, First John 5, right. 14? Yes, that's in the 1, 2, 3, the third part. I've, I've been speeding up a bit due to your reminder about uh, where we should be. To whom should we pray? To whom should we pray? And what can we pray about? That's the second part. We so pray about... John, pray first John 5.14, 5, is that 14. What, at, what you want? Yes. yes, please. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything yeah, according to his will, he heareth us. Yeah. Lovely. That's it. And the the other part of the scripture will will go on to say that so when he hears us, then we know he's going to answer us in in whatever way Jehovah sees fit. Um, the second point: How should we pray? That's a nice one. I think we also uh, looked at that last time, didn't we? We did, yes. Okay. Psalm 62, verse 8. So there's nothing really that we can't speak to Jehovah about. And for many people, the times are stressful for whatever reason, whether they are like in the Ukraine or in Russia or in Poland or in Germany or wherever they may be, even in the... United States. Uh, times are stressful. So, so I, I have a question on that regard that I was wanting to ask you. How close to the Ukraine are you? Um, seeing that we are on the other side of the of Africa, we are, if you like, if you look at the African continent mm -hmm. and you go, you go westwards about 100 kilometers, that's where there is a a group of islands and the islands I think they're either seven or eight and one island has been in the news uh, it's called La Palma because of volcanic eruptions where the whole lot of lava was engulfing a lot of the um, the island and uh, fortunately not many people were uh, killed I, I don't even know whether anyone was killed but uh, property was destroyed, plantations were destroyed, and 
Roads. Eventually, hmm? roads, roads, yeah, so and eventually the the uh, the outbreak stopped. So it's uh, La Palma is one of the places where we've been to. There was a, a German-speaking congregation that we visited some years ago, and uh, it's in that area. It's collectively called the Canaries. So to answer your question, the the distance between uh, Ukraine and ourselves is thousands of kilometers. Um, Germany, you know, where, where I grew up, is much, much closer. And uh, you probably heard in the news that uh, there are efforts being made by the surrounding countries to take in people who Refugees. are in desperate needs. A little um, experience that I, I just want to relate to you. Um, because we have in, in Ukraine, there are about 129,000 witnesses, yeah? And, mm -hmm. and obviously, we, about two weeks before the whole lot went bang, uh, we had warning from the governing body to watch out for the developments and, where possible, get out of that area. Uh, to make sure, you know, especially families, children, older, older individuals, and so on. So, a good number, I think, perhaps twenty thousand, moved themselves away from the possible uh, onslaught. So that was good. But a recent, uh, we we have connections, obviously, to Germany and to Ukraine and to Poland and so on, uh, through the the organization. And the recent um, wonderful experience mm. that happened, and I just briefly related, a family uh, were trying to get out of the Ukraine. They were attacked. To the best of my knowledge, they were something like four people, so quite possibly husband, wife, two children, in the car. They were shot at. The car was like a sieve. And the car ended up like a sieve with bullet holes. Mm. Not a single one was injured and they could use the car to drive another thousand kilometers to a safer place. Now, we have seen on the news at times when there have been these kind of attacks. And unfortunately, very often they use bombs. But even, you know, an AK-47 for argument's sake, when you start riddling a, a car with with bullets, what's what are the chances of no injuries, you know? Right. And so we were ever so grateful that they could get out under those kind of circumstances. Yeah. And uh, you know, so it's it's sometimes even so that yeah, well, we don't know the details because Jehovah doesn't tell us. But it's always the same. Sometimes we even physically protect it. So just a little anecdote of something that happened quite recently over the last two, three days. When we turn to Jehovah, sometimes he even protects us physically. Yeah. Okay. I think I think I think outside lost. the US outside lost. the US and inside. Lost you. Can you repeat? Oh, you there? Hello. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. So I think Times those things happen uh, much more outside the U.S. than inside because we've been, well, quite honestly, we've been the spoiled brat. Mm. Yes, agree with that. And, and I think that's I think that's Perfect. in the process of changing. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, there's not much time left, that's for sure. That's, okay, yeah, I I would agree. Anyway, all yeah. right, let's go. Yeah. Back. All right. So, um, 
the, the, the point, and this is relevant, of course, to all of us, the point three, how does God answer our prayers? Lovingly. Yeah, excellent. And uh, there's one there's one point here in James 1.5. Let's reiterate that because that's always good. Would you like to read that, please? James 1.5. Uh, working on it. God, yeah. Yeah, working on <laughs> Aren't it. Aren't we all? Uh, is uh, Boniface still with us? Yeah, he's here. Uh, let me just check. Lovely. I think he's here. Yeah, he's here. Um, good, good. All right. So if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Lovely. So this rendering says something very similar. So when we turn to Jehovah in prayer through Jesus, recognizing Jesus' position as our um, redeemer, as our king, as our leader, as the head of the Christian congregation, then we will get the answers. And I'm but, still working on. I'm still personally working on 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 making that adjustment. So yeah. I, I I catch myself quite frequently uh, praying to Jesus rather than the Father. I'm still working right. on that. Right. Well. The, the point is that uh, Jehovah is patient. Ooh. You you know that. Amen. Amen. And, and because he discerns an honest heart, he is even more patient. Amen. If he's, if he's patient with the wicked, because he doesn't want anyone to be destroyed, how much more will he be patient with someone who has an honest heart? Yeah. Amen. He, he knows he knows what's in your heart he knows what's in your wife's heart he knows what's in Boniface's heart and so on and so on maria's my own so so uh, that's why he's patient yeah amen okay. all right so god has requirements for prayer there is uh, a lovely scripture now I think this is where we uh, had kind of left off last time. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're good. We'll have to have another. We'll have to have another one on Monday. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. There you, there go. you go. Okay. Micah three four, please. Uh, what about Psalm sixty five two? Okay. You know that anyway. Well, no, that's the first reference. Okay. Just a moment here. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Yeah, and that that has happened in human uh, uh, in human history, hasn't it? This translation says something very similar. And what's interesting is the video that asks the question, does God listen to all prayers? Mm -hmm. which, which is all in excerpt. And it shows in the picture, you know, for instance, uh, could be Shinto Bud Buddhism, it could be uh, animalism, whatever it could be. And then, of course, the, the question is, is answered, isn't it? Uh, do you think the hero of prayer wants you to pray to him? Why or why not? Well, he wants a relationship. That's, That's his it. ultimate aim. That's why he created us in the first place. Absolutely spot on. Good. Let's have a look at Micah 3 4 because it says there we must try to live according to God's standards if we want him to hear our prayers. Micah 3, 4. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will mm -hmm. even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves in, ill in their doings. Okay. So the question... So here's, the, uh, here's the question, and you know, this is the, 
Yeah, I mean, this is a standard question throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. But who is actually hiding from Jehovah? Yeah, that's right. Absolutely right. How can you? It, it, it quite clearly says that the wicked will not have their, their prayers heard. Uh, and again, you know the point that you make um, quite often with the unconditional agape love. It mm. is available. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. But but if a, a person is set on a wicked course and does not turn around, like Manasseh, for instance, and Jesus, uh, sorry, Judas didn't turn around either. You know, yes, he he afterwards he chucked the thirty pieces of silver into the treasury, and they the the scribes and Pharisees, well, it's your problem, mate. You know, you 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 are the one who sold him to us meaning Jesus, um, right, right. But, but he was, he was uh, not, there's no evidence in the Bible that uh, Judas repented. So that's different from Manasseh. And to think that he was with the perfect son of Jehovah God and, and turn his back on him, you know, it's, I don't know. Anyway, so Jehovah listens to anyone who wants help, but those whose heart is set against him, he won't listen to, basically. First Peter because 3, 12. they aren't truly coming to him. Sorry, come again. Because they aren't truly coming to him. Very good. That's yeah. the idea. That's the idea. You've got if, it. If, they, if, they're, if they're praying in rote or in, in, in um, just, okay, I got to pray, therefore, you know, type situation, yeah. they're... Their hearts are not truly knit with him. That's it. They're not connected. You know, if if you want to have a conversation with me and I don't let you have a word in edgewise, how much conversation are we going to have? Absolutely. Lovely. Lovely. Absolutely right. The emphasis uh, of that is also made in First Peter 3.12, guys. So let's go to that. Yeah. One moment. You have to tell me when uh, you're whether you're still okay with time, because you know your schedule, but I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would not go beyond eight fifteen. It's seven forty nine now, so I wouldn't go because I do have I do have a ten o'clock commitment. Of course, of course, I understand. <laughs> so you tell me a few minutes before, please. Yeah. Sure. I will. Give me I, I'll try and remember to do that. Okay. <clears throat> Likewise, ye wives. Be, and, first, uh, and by the way, first, by the way, who is who? Who are the wives? Um, I think try try First Peter three twelve. First Peter oh three twelve. Did I miss one? Please. Oh, I missed a I missed a digit. That that changes things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Mm. Yeah, it says something very similar. For the eyes mm -hmm. of Jehovah are on the righteous, and his ears listens to their supplications. So there's a guarantee that Jehovah will listen to you, he will listen to <laughs> To your wife, he will listen to Boniface, listen to Maria and myself. You seem to have a very similar uh, tickle in the throat as Maria. She often has that kind of thing where, you know, she cough, cough, cough. Is that so? Yeah, I, I, I think I do right, right at the moment, but not normally. I just... I've been dealing with some dry. It, it gets dry in this area uh, uh -huh. this time of year, and so I'm I'm just fighting that a little bit. So it's dryness, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this, the going back to the scripture. Um, so Jehovah listens to the. Uh, we can we can say to those that are righteously inclined, but the face of Jehovah. Now that's interesting that it uses a different part of the body. 
is right face mm -hmm. of Jehovah is against those doing bad things uh, and you know the expression that we have let's face it mm -hmm. in other words let's look the matter straight in, in in the face and say hang on a minute this is wrong maybe it comes from that we don't know okay so we the bullet point there asks, how can we make sure that Jehovah will listen to our prayers? By drawing close to him and he will draw close to, uh, to us. Didn't we read that earlier? That's the best answer. Because mm -hmm. it's okay. Now we have a typical example, which we looked at last time or the time before. During a war, both sides may pray for victory is it reasonable to expect God to answer these prayers? Would, would you ask um, Boniface what he thinks about it? Because I know what you think about it. Yeah, we, I'll do that offline. You do it afterwards, okay. Yeah. So we, we look now at what's going on in Europe. An absolute and utter shambles where thousands of individuals, whether they're soldiers or they're not soldiers, civilians, children, and all sorts. Once again, about 75 years after the end of the last slaughter, who is involved in Russia? The Russian Orthodox Church. Right. Who, is involved, who is involved in the Ukraine? A similar church. So, is it reasonable to expect God to answer these prayers? I know what your answer is. Mm -hmm. You know what my answer is. And then you, um, you quite rightly commented on our prayers should come from the heart. Amen. Um, how can you avoid saying the same things over and over again in your prayers? Oh, there you are. Uh, mm -hmm. Did we want to read Matthew 6, 7? Yep. Please. I clicked on it. It wasn't responding. There it is. Yeah, but please. When ye, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Yeah. When praying, do not say the same things over and over again as the, pray, the people of the nations do, for they imagine they will get a hearing for their use of many words. And of course, prayers that are not heard by God are a, a, an ongoing subject for, you know, consideration, personal research. I mean, years ago, I, I learned about the prayer wheel where prayers were written onto, and this thing was turned. Um, have you ever come across it? Uh, come, come across repetitive prayer or? A prayer, a prayer wheel. Oh, prayer wheel. I've seen, there's actually, uh, yes, I've seen prayer wheels, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the rosary. The other one is rosaries, of course, yeah. Another one. Well, the rosary, yeah. okay, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you, I, I, I believe you can use aids in prayer to help you kind of navigate through prayer, but mm -hmm. you, again, they should not be uh, rote type situations. Yeah, of course. And necessarily, uh, I mean, because after all, we're limited uh, as mere humans, uh, we do at times repeat things, but that doesn't mean. Like, for instance, we pray for God's kingdom to come, like uh, for his will to be done. We repeat to forgive us our errors each day and things like that. But that's not what the Bible is talking about. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Do you want to read the last section under five there each day? Sure. Just a moment. Each day you might think of one specific blessing in your life <clears throat> and then thank Jehovah for that blessing. 
do this every day for a week and you will have prayed about seven different topics without repeating yourself. Well, that's a good mm -hmm. idea. That's not bad, is it? Hmm? Mm -hmm. And the other point there that we have this gift that is a... So I, I'd like to step back just one moment um, mm -hmm. to that paragraph. The 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 thing that um, a lot of people and even myself sometimes forgets is is within this paragraph you're thanking Jehovah for blessings. We're much more prone to come to him with the problems than we are to thank him for the blessings. And I like the idea of, you know, coming before him for him and, you know, thanking him for uh, those things which have uh, been considered uh, a blessing in your life, whether miracle or otherwise. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, you know, time and again, not only do Maria and myself chat, uh, how enjoyable it is to uh, study uh, what the Bible teaches with you and and one of us listening in and, and uh, your wife. But also I pray for Jehovah to answer your prayers and I pray for Jehovah to um, to grant you his Holy Spirit, to grant you understanding which, as time goes on, will be deeper and deeper. So, uh, you know, I also, time and again, thank Jehovah for you and I having met and being able to discuss his word. That, to me, is Amen. a tremendous, that is a tremendous blessing. And it, it is a gift, you know. So, so yeah. And besides, besides that, I mean, each day we can thank him for the gift of life, for the knowledge that, for instance, this kind of uh, world as it is, that we know it is not of Jehovah's doing or approval, but presently uh, for his permission, that he's told us that Satan is the one who's going to uh, be moved out of the way the one that is behind what's going on in Russia and Ukraine and what's been before, you know, the Second World War, the First World War, the ones in between Vietnam, Korea, and so on and so on, going back to the beginning of human history. So that knowledge is so precious, and the knowledge that there, there is uh, a new world of righteousness where so, um, uh, so you know i was recently thinking on this i'm going to bird walk here for a minute if i may mm -hmm. yeah, yeah sure thing but from the beginning of time adam and eve satan wanted to destroy humanity and so he got us off track but god made the difference mm -hmm. um we can go through a lot of different conversations uh mm -hmm. abraham to kill his son isaac Jonah being swallowed by the whale, you know, we can go all the way uh, through mm -hmm. to the time of Christ. Now, uh, what, uh, Christ is crucified and defeated and, and eliminated. And so Satan once again has the victory, short term, short lived, because three days later, uh, the, the Son of God rose again. And then we can look at the the apostles and whatnot, and the 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 you know the, they may have had a hard circumstances within their life, but each and every time we hunt on the hand of uh, of Jesus and His Father, uh, mm -hmm. we have been provided for. The only time we end up not being provided for is when we let go of the hand, and even then we are still provided for but we're not as close because we've let go of the hand. Yeah. We can take all of this even into uh, history, Hitler, Mussolini, and mm -hmm. now Putin, and we can know that somehow God is going to have the victory in this because that's what it has done every single time. Yeah. So we, we, we know that with assurance. We don't know how, and who knows? Mm -hmm. We might lose our life in the process, but isn't doesn't the Bible say that if we lose our life, we gain it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's a thought, 
But I think that Boniface will identify with this as well, because we have a few friends that come from Sierra Leone, and Sierra Leone had uh, her own civil wars where uh, there's one, one of our dear brothers, he's about 40, and as a child, um, he, he saw things in Sierra Leone that were disgusting. And to see things like that as a child, you know, this should never happen. And it's obvious that it's satanic. Yep. Um, but, but to know the fact that Jehovah has shown us the solution and leads us to that, um, you know, to me, that is uh, fantastic. Because how have we deserved it, Guy? We haven't. We haven't right. deserved Because we were born in sin. And, you know, why, why are we worthy of this fantastic knowledge that with each day the, the uh, desire of Jehovah to do something about the situation not only exists, but it grows. In, in, Job, in, in Job it's talking about the resurrection for the works of your hand, you will have a yearning. And the way in which Jehovah must, and, and Jesus therefore, ache to get his hands on all this awful stuff and resolve it once and for all. You know, that's go back, go back to, to prayer, yeah? Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Where are we? Oh, okay. Please. Uh -huh. Are we still okay for What's that? Yeah, I got about okay? 10 minutes. Got, got about 10 minutes. All right, and five minutes. Um, and then... and, and I'm look, I was looking at the study. We got about one point left, so I'm thinking we should be able to wrap this up. All right. For, this, for this study. Okay. Um, anyway. Um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, please. Sure. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah, that's it. In this uh, rendering, it says something very similar. Ask the question, although prayer does not always make our problems go away, how does it help? Okay, just a moment here. Where are you? Wait a minute, where are you? Bullet bullet point under under the highlighted. Oh, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right. Uh, well, it connects us into the source, and um, I would actually disagree with this question. Go on. <laughs> because if we, uh, no matter what the situation is, we just got a report from the doctor, uh, it doesn't look good. If we are connected to the source and understand our placement within this life and eternal life, then no matter what the situation is, it doesn't matter in a really? sense. You, you, really, um, really. There was, uh, I just recently heard this relayed uh, from a friend of mine. Um, I, I don't, um, basically, uh, he was captured by enemy uh, forces and he was said, yeah, uh, basically, they took him through, if you do not deny your God, you, we're going to take all your property. And he says, I own nothing. You, you, you go ahead, take my property. We're we're gonna we're gonna just uh, you know kill your friends and my, I said my friends know the Lord and so they're saved and uh, go ahead they're, they're that will only bring them victory and yeah. well I, I'm I, I we're gonna take all your money and I have no money everything I get is provided to me by Jehovah mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 we're gonna kill you and uh, yourself so mm -hmm. for me to die is gain. Go ahead, mm -hmm. and, and it's like um, you just he as the story goes, uh, he was so centered on 
being focused on God, and we have absolutely must get there now. Mm -hmm. um, so centered on being focused on his heart, uh, the heart of Jehovah and the heart of Jesus, mm -hmm. that, <clears throat> that it didn't matter what they did. It's like, you can't touch me. Well, in that sense, although prayer does not always make our problems go away, well, if we're connected, our problems go away. Our problems might still be there, but it's a totally different dimension. That's it. And the perspective is the best we can have, isn't it? Amen. That's, that's really it. Yeah. It reminds me of Romans 8, 38 and 39. You know, who can, mm -hmm. separate, who can separate from from God's love? The second bullet point, what are some things you would like to pray about? So there's a personal question. Oh, I, I have lots of different prayers. Um, I'm sure. Number one uh, for this world and the, the situation. I, I, I'm not praying that it stops because mm -hmm. in order for revelation to be filled or uh, fulfilled, we have to go through this. So if yeah. I pray that, 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 that things stop, then I'm praying that the Lord not come back soon. And I, I'm sorry, I, I kind of want him to come back soon. I, I, I'm tired of this baloney. That's right. Yeah. And we, in, in our conduct and attitude, we can choose to not to be part of it. And you've already done that to some extent by being a conscientious objector, for instance. Yeah? Amen. Which yep. true Christians, true Christians would, you know, we've had loads of cases in the US of A. We've had loads of cases in South Africa. We've had loads of cases in South Korea. Uh, there were an enormous number of individuals who were uh, witnesses, who were as conscientious objector, incarcerated. And eventually, the law was changed in South uh, Korea. But it took a long time, and there were thousands and thousands and thousands of years handed out in, in prison sentences. But in the end, you know, it, 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 the authorities didn't win because in due time Jehovah moved it in such a way that the individuals, the law was changed and the individuals were released. Okay, well done. Sorry I was so long winded at the beginning. Shall we close in prayer? Well, do Shall we, we want to do number prayer? seven? We, we have time to do number seven. Are you so sure? We wrap this one up. Okay, very good. So make time for prayer. Matthew 14, 23. It's the recommendation. Jesus example. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And Mark 1, 35. Working on it. No hurry. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. So the question, two bullet points, what did Jesus do to make time for prayer? He was deliberate. That's it. Good. Good. He got up early in the morning. He got up early in the morning. He mm -hmm. went away from his disciples in private conversation with his heavenly father. Amen. And... I'm sure you can answer this question e easily. When could you find time to pray? The interesting thing on me and uh, is that I actually struggle somewhat with prayer. Not that I don't believe in it. Not that I don't mm -hmm. think it's valuable. But I mm -hmm. find myself so busy studying into the Word of God and yeah. into what God, God's Word says. And, and on that side of the platform that I don't believe that I personally spend enough time on this side, mm -hmm. um, I, I think there might be some personal reasons for that. But at mm -hmm. the same time, 
getting in and d- digging into the word and whatnot and uh, yeah. where other people can read and whatnot, like what is happening on Quora, that actually mm-hmm. is the answer to a prayer that I that I had. I'm not going to unfold the details fully on that, but um, mm-hmm. that was a, I I had a platform like this before, um, but then uh, you know things changed, and so I was like, you know, I'd love to have another platform like this, and well, then I found Quora. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so it okay. just um that if if there was one thing that uh, i think uh you you could pray for for myself it's to really get convicted about a stronger prayer life lovely i'll do that absolutely i mean this is all progressive uh god I agree. Mm-hmm. this is all progressive it doesn't matter where we are in life um, we always learn, and there are some things that maybe years ago we uh, thought we knew accurately, and as time goes on, we realize no, we don't, uh, or we didn't know accurately. The same with with the things we do. There is no such thing today as a perfect person. In a, in a relative sense, from Jehovah's viewpoint, maybe there are some, you know, but it's, sure. it's, got, it's got to be relative. It's certainly not absolute like Jesus. So some people say prayer is just a mental crutch. What would you say? Well, for them, it probably is. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Okay. So. Summary, sincere prayers draws closer to God give us peace of mind, and give us the strength we need to please Jehovah. In the review, to whom should we pray? To the Father. Yeah. How should we pray? Uh, A good pattern is the Lord's Prayer, as you've shown before in Matthew. Right, okay. Um, And if we think what prayer is, meaning uh, a personal respectful communication with our Creator, Mm. What are some what are some benefits of prayer? I don't have that long. I, I only have a minute to answer that question. Are you serious? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. So wonderful. Thank you ever so much for your patience and much appreciate our discussions. And Likewise. please please give our love to your dear wife. Irene to Boniface. Shall we conclude in prayer? Please do. Father Jehovah, we are so, so grateful that as imperfect, sinful humans, we can approach you through your dear son Jesus that made access possible and acceptable uh, access to you by us recognizing the wonderful role that your son prayed, the wonderful example, the perfect model for us to follow its steps closely, and we very much thank you for that. On behalf of Guy, we want to pray, please, that he takes more advantage of this avenue of prayer, as we ourselves want to do, because we know that when we're linked in, so to speak, or use illustration that Guy used earlier on about taking hold of your hand, then certainly we are more in union with you, more at one with you, exactly as your dear son Jesus prayed. We thank you so much for the way in which you help us. At the beginning of this discussion, we prayed for your Holy Spirit. It's evident that uh, by means of this and by means of your dear son, you reach honest hearts. And we are convinced that Guy, uh, as well as his dear wife, Irene, as well as Boniface, want to show you their honest heart. We certainly ourselves want to do that. And so we give you thanks time and again for these loving provisions. And we offer our praise and humble forgiveness too for our errors that you see in us through the one whose ransom made possible the future for um, obedient humans that want to demonstrate their love of you. This we ask 
through our King Christ Jesus, to your praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Guy. And give you. Your dear, and give your dear wife a hug. Yeah. Will do. And uh, blessings to you both. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Boniface.